Okay, Larry gave me the beat. That means we're back on. I'm going to cover a little bit of roughing out on uh, spindle work. The three tools that I have for that is my two skews here. I have a large one here, small one here. These are the way they would come shipped to you. I have a parabolic curve on the end of them. When we go to the grinder, I'll show you how I sharpen these. Be careful when you get these, they're very sharp. It's so one thing I do with my tools, I do ship them to you sharp. They'll be sharp one time anyway. Uh, there's about 70 degrees here, something like that. It's radius on this side for rolling beads. Uh, we'll try to do that. This is the most dreaded tool in your shop, I'm sure. Uh, the only way you're going to get to be proficient with this is to practice. You're going to hear me harp on that a lot through this uh, video. Uh, but that's just what you got to do. You got to put in the time. Uh, it's if, if you're in a band or if you're an ice skater, if you're a potter, glass blower, don't matter what it is, you still have to practice. And that's what you got to do. And what I've noticed with uh, wood turners, they're the most impatient people in the world. Buy a lathe, buy a couple tools, and they think they're experts. They probably are something, but you still got to practice. There's a lot of things that go into wood turning. You know, the, how the grain is, the way it lays out, which direction it's going. And there's a lot of things that enter into wood turning, and you have to be very concentrated on what's going on. And you also have to wind up being kind of not real tense when you're turning, because whatever tension you put into a tool is going to wind up right here at the business end. So if you're hanging on to this tool with a death grip, that's what's going to happen. It's going to all show up at the end of the tool. So you got to learn to be comfortable with it, and just to try to be relaxed. I wouldn't say have a beer or a glass of wine first because bad things can happen then, but the way these are made, they have a tang on the end of them, they're modular, they can go in a handle like this. The other tool that I make for roughing out spindle work is a small roughing gouge. It's made out of solid bar, M42 cobalt, the same steel, fits in my handles, any of them. We'll cover the handles later in the video. Uh, so we'll get on with it here and make some shavings. That's what we all kind of want to do anyway. Just have a piece of kind of uh, halfway green maple here. This is just about roughing out. Uh, the dreaded skew is probably the one that scared people the most. And if, and if you're having difficulties with that, you just got to practice. I'm going to show you a, a couple three or four different cuts here with that. I'll start out with the roughing gouge because it's probably the easiest one to use. I want a little bit of speed here because uh, just I got all these bumps and it makes, makes it run smoother. I'm just going to apply this to the tool rest. Go in that direction. I can roll it over to right about there. Very thick. Uh, there's a lot of big uh, Roughing gouges out there, I, they're excellent tools also. But even with a small one with this short handle here, it is fairly efficient at taking wood off. But if there's another way that you can get it rid of it probably a little faster, and that's with a skew. And this is called a peeling cut. It's the same way they peel logs when they're making plywood. And this cut is not just in like this. The cut is up and in. Up and in. I'm going to move my tool rest in a little bit. Not that important of where your tool rest height is with this. You don't want to be down below center. You kind of want to be up where you're visible. I'll show that cut again. It's up and in. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. The pressure is down on the tool rest. Up and in. This is a heavy tool. Now you see what I did there? As I finished these peeling cuts, I just switched over to the radius part of this tool. To the curved part of the tool, it's 
can see I'm not getting beat up. I'm not hanging on to this with a death grip. Got too much stuff over here stacked up. Up and in. That's a rougher. Gets rid of the wood really fast. I don't think there's a more efficient way to rough out spindle work than what it is with a skewer. This is the smaller skewer. It will do the same thing. This is a lot of fun. You can go both directions with this. Great shaving. Great fun. I'm going to take this in down a little bit. You can see what I, that, that cut right there, I'm staying on the bevel. If I go straight in like this, I'm just turning it into a scraper. What that's going to do is knock the edge off really fast. Up and in. V cut. Same way, we're going to go up and in. We're not going just straight in like this. We're just going to burn the wood if we do that. Just cut it up. Up and in. Probably one of the more difficult things to do with this cue is to roll a bead. Uh, I probably should have practiced a little bit, probably should have warmed up. But I'm going to use this side of the skew for that. It has this radius in it, rather than this flat. This flat side is made for these V-cuts. Keeps the tool flat on the tool rest. Now we're going to try to roll a bead. I'm going to raise this tool rest a little bit, probably get a little bit better view of this. I'm going to roll one going that way towards the camera. Now you can see my thumb is going to be <coughs> pretty much what, what's going to do most of the work. As I do most of my work, I use my thumb a lot. When I'm doing spindle work, the small, fine finials, anything, I have my kind of have a finger hooked underneath the tool rest there, and then my thumb is going to do the work here. There's a little point at the top of that beam. Don't worry too much about that. A little piece of sandpaper will take that off. If you've had success with that cut, stop. That's a little tricky maneuver there. That's how I would roll beams. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other cuts you can do with a skew. There's a lot of videos out there that'll go into that. Probably a lot more. There's a lot, probably a lot more experts on it than what I am. But I'm going to show you down here what's called the planing cut. I'll use this small skew. With the planing cut you can either do with the point up or the point down. Uh, I think most videos have the point up. Uh, I kind of find that that cut for me varies on the timber that I'm using. This is going to be a really clean cut here. Now that's a long point up. Let's stop and look at that cut. I think this piece of wood's got a little crack. I heard something in there. There it is right there. But if you look at this cut, it's pretty clean. That was a long point up. This is a long point down. I'm going to be working in the middle of this skew. I don't want to get anything tucked in there. When you get a catch with a skew, it's because you're getting too much of the edge in contact with the wood. 
the radius on the end of this does help that. Now this is the same planing cut with the long point down. You can't take a lot of wood with this cut because we're going straight against the end grain. This is just a finishing cut. You see how my thumb, my thumb is holding the tool down on the tool rest? I have my finger hooked underneath the tool rest. I have little short stubby hands. That's why I kind of use these round tool rests. Advantages and disadvantages to the round tool rest. The disadvantages, you can't get it really close to the work. The advantage for me is, is I use my finger under it a lot. If I have a lot of material here, I can't get my thumb under there. And I use my thumb as an anchor a lot. Uh, that's strictly my, my preference. Can you cut this way with it? Uh, yeah, I will look in. Cut towards the camera, do a planing cut towards the camera. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larry wants me to switch hands. And as a wood turner, you got to be able, I think you got to be able to learn to turn left and right. Uh, so I'm going to make a plenty cut going that way so we can see this a little bit better. This would be the long point up. If you listen to that cut, we picked up at the beginning of that cut this part right here where this wood was missing and this is flapping on us so that lifts up like that we're going to get rid of that and I'm going to make that cut again you can probably see this peeling cut this way better right? Yep. Long point up. I bet it's going to cut better with the long point down going in that direction. I think it just has to do with the, the lay of the grain of the wood in the tree. I'm not sure. Another one of those things there's probably experts out there that can explain that better than I can. Part of the why, part of the reason why they call this the skew is because the skewed angle that we're approaching this wood at. We're not this way. We're at a skewed angle. I'm not an expert on the skew by any means whatsoever. But uh, there's a lot of great videos out there on skew. And it's like anything, you still got to practice it. So we're going to knock the corners off this. Uh, what I'm going to start out with first is my roughing gouge. I'll kind of show you how that works. And we'll do a little bit of this with a skew. And we'll do a little bit of ingrain hollowing on this. So, And whatever you're doing around the lathe, I want you to be safe. Uh, probably should have a face shield on here while you're doing this. I don't because it muffles the voice quite a bit. If we get into faceplate work, I, I would definitely be sure to have one on there. So raise this tool rest a little bit. Maybe you can see the tool a little bit more. And what I'm going to do, the grain's all running this way, so I'm going to go this way with that grain. I'm going to take it from the largest to the smallest diameter. Not going to cut right there. I'm just going to raise the handle until I pick up a cut. And off you go. More of a cut, I just raise the handle more. some of that with a skew. We've got a little bit left right here. This would be the movement. 
I think uh, probably more fun than the rugby dog. Where are these little corners back here? Up and in. Come off the end of the tool rest there, you better cut that, Larry. Go across the end of this just to true it up. So we're back at the grinder. I'm going to go over how I sharpen a skew. We tried this once already, but the phone rang in the middle of it. It was lunch. So we're going to do this again. Uh, this is my small skew. Uh, I like to sharpen these out of the handle. And as soon as I do this, I think you'll see why. What I'm gonna do is kind of hold it there with my finger. I have my platform set to the angle that I want. This is a CBN wheel, 180 grit. One side, then the other. That's about it, as far as the grinder part of it goes. Now on this side right here, you can feel a little burr there that's built up. Not so much on the other side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my diamond hone. <clears throat> I'm going to find out where I'm on my bevel here. You can feel it rock back and forth. Make a couple passes. And that would be it. It's very sharp now. You probably almost shave with that. I don't know. I was shaving yesterday. You can see where the hair has gone there. You can see some of the hair come off. Anyway, my skin. them there so that's how I do the skews anyway 